Hello guys, I'm Paul from dronesguitar.com and this is a hands-on comparison between the DJI Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air. I know it's hard, but I promise I'll do my best to help you decide by the end of this video which one to buy. So make sure you stick till the end because I have some really interesting footage comparisons side by side. We'll go through everything you'll need to see, specs, a range test, noise test and even a battery life test. And even a zoomed in footage comparison. If you want to see all the important specs compared and even some that I don't mention in this video, side by side in a table, go in the article in the description. We can also compare the shots in real time side by side just by dragging a comparison separator. Just remember that the Mavic Air is double in price compared to the Mavic Mini, so keep that in mind. Battery life. In this department, the Mavic Mini destroys all competition including the Mavic Air in this case. The 21 minutes of the Mavic Air are quite a bit less compared to the Mini's 30 minutes of flight time. In real life scenarios, you'll probably fly for 3 to 4 minutes less than the ideal numbers, so about 27 minutes max for the Mini and about 18 for the Air. The price difference between the batteries might be important for you. The Mavic Air battery, because it's also bigger, is twice as expensive, while the Mavic Mini battery currently costs about $45. We have a definite winner, one point for the Mavic Mini. Let's compare the range. I have a personal experience when it comes to range that changed my opinion on these two drones. Recently I have range tested a few drones including the Air and the Mavic Mini and although on paper they should have been the exact same, the results have been much more different in real life, at least for me. Both my drones are bought from Europe, so they have the same CE software limitations, unlike the ones bought in the States that are on FCC mode. The FCC mode allows for 4 km max in both drones, so you should have no problem flying them as far as you please. But in Europe things are a bit more limiting, DJI tells us both drones should go to a maximum of 2 km in CE mode, but somehow I got way different results. I could get the Mavic Mini as far as 2800 meters, that's almost 3 km, while the Mavic Air started to lose signal at 500 meters and lost connection entirely at about 600 or more. I know I got 1 km once with the Mavic Air, but this was a test drone from a high place, without city Wi-Fi interference and the antennas were properly adjusted. Maybe it's just something wrong with my version of the Mavic Air, but the Mavic Mini certainly won this one again. Is the weight difference that important? Well, it really depends if you think registering your drone is important. Otherwise, the 430 grams of the Mavic Air don't seem that much compared to the 249 grams of the Spark. But it actually is a big difference if you're from the USA and don't plan to register your drone because of different reasons. If you want to see side by side differences between these two, including the weight and size, you should check the Jones Gated article that you can find in the description. How fast can these two fly? I initially thought the Mavic Mini would be much slower than the Spark for example because it would have smaller motors and less overall power. However, that's not really the case. The Mavic Mini can fly for up to 47 km per hour, while the Spark can reach 50 km per hour, a measly 3 km difference. Although the DJI Mavic Air has the big price with 68 km per hour max speed in sport mode. So if speed is important for you, you might want to take a look at this spec. Let's talk a bit about obstacle sensors and indoors flight. Speaking about obstacle avoidance, both have bottom sensors for flying inside and better landing. But the Mavic Mini lacks the forward facing sensors even if it may look like it has them. Personally, I usually deactivate the sensors just to have more freedom in flight, so I'm more than willing to compromise in this department. Now, in which scenarios is obstacle avoidance useful? When you're using things like follow me or other flight modes, flying backwards for a shot, for detecting cables, or while flying when looking down, which means you can't see what's in front of you so it makes it a little more dangerous. What about flying indoors? This is something I would normally not recommend to do with an expensive DJI drone. Even so, the new Mavic Mini changed my perspective on that. As I put the prop guards on, I took one for the team and tried hitting the drone on a wall. And nothing happened. The drone not only flies incredibly stable, it's also crash proof, pretty much. The Mavic Air on the other hand, even though it's just stable, I couldn't manage to move around as it's too scary that it might actually hit something. And hitting your skin with fast moving propellers is not my favorite activity. Let's talk a bit about camera specs. We've seen that so far the cheaper drone, the Mavic Mini, outclasses the Air in every single way. This is a time for the Mavic Air to redeem itself. Both these drones come with excellent stabilization thanks to their 3 axis gimbals. This makes the side movement much smoother compared to the Spark for example that only specs a 2 axis gimbal and can get jittery if you do circles around an object for example. Now 4K versus 2.7K footage, is the difference that important? I usually actually record in 2.7K with even 4K drones 
because it's easier to process and still has plenty of sharpness and detail in the image. So the Mavic Mini is perfect by default, for me at least. But it is understandable why you would want to record in 4K in some situations, so the Mavic Air wins this one. Another easy way to tell how good a camera records details is the bitrate, which is basically a number of bits of information that's processed in a unit of time. The Mavic Air has 100 megabits per second, which is really amazing. The Mavic Mini has 40, but believe it or not, the DJ Spark comes with only 24 megabits per second, which is quite a difference. Camera settings, which one is better for professionals? Unfortunately, the Mavic Mini doesn't have the option to change ISO and shutter speed manually while recording the video. And that's a shame because it means you can't really use precise image adjustments in a professional setting. The automatic mode does a great job for most people though. We'll have to see if they release some ND filters as that might change things a bit. If you don't know what ND filters are and want to know more about that, I'll make an article and a video about that in about a week from now, so subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you're interested in that. But you know what I care about, and most photographers do, shooting raw photos. And one thing is certain, the Mavic Mini doesn't shoot RAW photos, only JPEG, exactly as the DJ Spark. But the Mavic Air does take both JPEG and RAW photos. So if you really need that DNG images for better post-processing and playing with them, the Air is the way to go. Now let's finally compare the footage and photos and zoom them in to see which one is better for you. As mentioned previously, the article on Jones Gator where I compare these two drones and the Spark has interactive images where you can draw a slider in real time, where you can compare the photos and video stills in real time. Let's look a bit over how the Mavic Mini compares to the Mavic Air, a much more expensive drone, in terms of image and video quality. I have recorded pretty much the same flight pattern with both and a few other drones that I'll review soon enough. I'll let you decide what you prefer best, but if you want my opinion, I find the Mavic Mini to be slightly sharper, reminiscent of the original Mavic Pro. Unfortunately, this can be a downside for professionals, as an image that is too sharp takes from the overall cinematic effect and makes things a little bit too crisp and unnatural. But now, can the sharpness of the Mavic Mini be changed from the app? Unfortunately, no, and this might be a downside for professionals who like to fiddle with their settings. The Air also has the option to make the image sharper or less sharp from the app settings. However, the Mavic Mini is perfect for beginners who wouldn't want to play with the sharpness anyway. Does the Mavic Mini come with a log profile? No, the Mavic Mini doesn't shoot in D-Log or any log profile. It only has the standard normal natural color mode. For those of you who don't know, log profiles are modes where you shoot with the minimum color in the video. And this allows for a better post-processing ability and a wider range of color correction to be made. The Mavic Mini transmitter is as simple as it gets. No LCD display, no back custom buttons, just the return to home button, a camera and a photo button, the scroll wheel for camera, and the removable sticks. The Mavic Air controller is a bit more complex, as it has a pause button, a sport mode button, two custom buttons in the back, the return to home button, and the turn on button, which could be useful to have on some women. Nice. Flight modes. This is one of the important drawbacks of the Mavic Mini if you care a lot about them. You see, the Mavic Mini uses a new app called DJ Fly, and it's tailored more for beginners and simplicity. It still has the main functions and settings like return to home height, gimbal sensitivity and some camera resolution settings, but it definitely lacks some important features. Does the Mavic Mini come with follow me? A bit of a disappointment here as the Mavic Mini doesn't come with the follow me option, nor with some of the flight modes we expect from DJI drones, like waypoints, course lock and more. Both the Spark and the Air have really good follow me modes and generally a few more flight modes compared to the Mavic Mini, which is quite stripped down to the basics. The Mini does come with quick shots like Droney, Helix, Orbit, etc. that can actually use subject tracking while you're doing them, so it's there. This basically means that it follows the subject but while circling around. Now the big question, is it worth it to change from the Mavic Air to the Mavic Mini? In most cases not, but the Mavic Mini does have certain advantages that some of the current Mavic Air owners would appreciate more than what the Air currently offers. Plus, you would get more than enough money back by selling your Mavic Air since it's more expensive. If you're really not keen on registering your drone and want a long-flying, lightweight 2.7K drone, go for the Mavic Mini. If you want to record professionally and plan to use ND filters or want RAW photos, the Mavic Air is a better choice. But frankly, the manual settings side is the only really important advantage that the Air brings to the table. So, please let me know down in the comments which one you'll buy. When you decide, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd click the links down in the description to buy any of these drones from there. 
you'll pay the same price and I'll get a small commission. It's a win-win, right? Recommend video for you right here. Check the drones for sale tool right here. Or if you want, you can subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you later alligator.